So our friend Craxton from last video was asking for coaching. We're gonna take about 10 minutes and talk about how we need to be approaching lore master fights. How, what can we be doing better? How to beat lore masters, some different strategies. Now, lore masters are one of the very few fights, um, very few fights, very few freeps, excuse me, where a lot of the fight is subjective. Um, in other words, how you approach the fight depends on the player that you're fighting against. I'm gonna approach the fight as if you're fighting somebody who's very good at lore masters so any of the suggestions i give here might not be necessary against lore masters that aren't as experienced um for those guys you just go with straight damage and just smash them and you know instantly kill them however i'm going to treat this as if um you're fighting someone who's good at the class and um so you guys have an idea of how you should be approaching those fights um i like to pretend um that every person in your fight is good at their class so that you never get caught off guard so let's go ahead and start the video um so first things first, tactical mitts are great against lore masters. Everybody can kind of figure that one out. <clears throat> we'll talk about your rotation. Okay, you're waiting for SI stun immunity to fade off. You may be waiting for a stack of water lower to expire. That's smart. You want to get that initial stun on the lore master. Um, if possible, he's letting you get it, which is awesome. And you're opposing with puddle, pounce, eye gouge, claws. Okay, hip small. Now really quick, I would have replaced Maul here with PC simply because he's running 75k morale and he has a Tomo Defense, so that Maul's not gonna quite hit as hard because Maul goes through Tomo Defense. He also has so much morale that 5% of 75 uh, is 37.5K, 3.75K without a crit. If that crits though, that's like a 7K hit, um, which Maul's not gonna touch that. So I would have used that there, and then I would have gone into Claws and Maul, but that's fine. That's not a bad rotation, okay? Prioritizing Piercing Claws there. Okay, so you're getting kited right here. So right here, here's what you need to do. He covers uh, Fire Lore with Sign of Power Command. That's a smart call. That means that you cannot use your Fear Pot to remove Fire Lore. What you need to do here is, okay, you're already doing it. You're slowing, good, okay? Now you need to Shadow Fangs right now. Okay, where's Shadow Fangs, where's Shadow Fangs? Where is it, where is it, where is it? I'm looking, okay, so right here, go ahead and debuff his inductions right now. Okay, you're going into damage, not optimal. The thing with Lore Masters is you want to stack your debuffs instantly. Like, you want to get them up immediately. The faster you get your debuffs up, the more inca incapacitated the Lore Masters. Remember, Lore Masters benefit from the fight slowing down, from the fight going on, from them being able to get off the skills that they want off the bat. If they stabilize, they can win this fight. Your job here should be putting up damage, um, that's great, that's fine, but it also should be incapacitating their ability to stabilize, They're incapacitating their ability to heal, incapacitating their ability to get off inductions and things like that. Claws is great, but you're Fire Lord right now. Right now you need to be incapacitating him first, debuffing him, and then you know soak on the damage. Right now he doesn't have any debuffs outside of slowing him, and you have three debuffs right now that could be potent. So really get the Shadow Fangs up right off the bat, like instantly get it to where it's going to be so hard for him to get off any inductions that he's just going to be absolutely miserable and i guarantee you i know what's going to happen here he's kiting you and here comes a blinding flash or a staff strike probably a staff strike okay so you're going for a rabid bite you're going to try and cover fleas don't do that until you get shadow fangs he can't cover he can't remove shadow fangs so that's a guaranteed debuff another thing to talk about this and we talked a little bit about this last week is you need to be stun potting uh, okay, it's on cooldown. That's really unfortunate. You need to be pre-stun potting this right now because you know CC is going to be happening right here. Here it comes. I guarantee you. Yep, there it is. Blinding flash. That's a smart call by him. He's going to blinding flash you, and then he's going to get off an induction. Probably water lure. Yep. Now, you would have been able to interrupt that water lure if you had stun potted. He would have not been able to get that off. Okay, so now you're getting into shadow fangs. That's fine. You used fleas immediately before he blinding flashed you. That's fine. He uh, uh, disease potted your rabbit bite and fleas is still up. And now you have shadow fangs. Okay, so this is great. Now, this is where you start your DPS rotation. Now you're going to start to go in claws, eye gouge, the et cetera stuff. You're going to get an interrupt there, it looks like. How did you not interrupt that? Was he the induction? Where was eye gouge here? Where's eye gouge? How am I always losing eye gouge? Okay, I got just up there. It must have just been, that's a little bit unlucky. Okay, so from here, now you silence. You silence right here. Because he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna try and stun you again. If you silence here, he's not gonna be able to do anything. Should have silenced it. Remember, you wanna keep throat rip on cooldown as much as possible against floor masters. Room keepers, minstrels, it's not as effective because they have very reliable uh, room, um, wound pot, fear disease, 
uh, removal skills. Lore Masters do not. Their removal skill is terrible. It has a nasty induction um, and it's very easy to interrupt. So you need to be keep spam, spam the silence. Remember, you can totally incapacitate this guy with the silence. The only thing he's going to be able to get off is like a sticky gourd. Um, also worth noting that because he's covered Fire Lore, you need to be using your uh, um, Cry Pot on this debuff right here. Um, I do that against most competent Lore Masters because you're not, it's hard to pot Fire Lore. Now, if you see a Fire Lore uncovered later in the fight, yeah, it's definitely worth potting that instead of this. But this is a good 10% fire mitigation debuff, for increasing your damage and coming to probably around 15 to 20%. If you pot that, the Raven's gonna take a while before it applies it again, and you can really reduce the damage that you take. So again, this should be a silence here. Should be a silence. Okay, you're immune. That was, oh, his timing wasn't quite perfect there. This should be a silence here. Yeah, from here, you're just kind of DPS rotation. Uh, here's what you have to think about here. Like, <clears throat> I know you're going to the Claws, Eye Gods, and you're going from there, and that's fine. But, Rend is just not really important right now. Oh, wait a second. Take that back. I didn't. You didn't have Rend up yet. Okay, that's fine. Should be silencing now because you know that he's going to try and... Yeah, okay, that's fine. But remember, if you silence into a CC, it really, really sucks as a lore master because you, you CC them great, but I can't get anything off because I'm silenced. So it like wastes their whole CC duration. See, right there, he would not have gotten out of Burning Embers. Okay, he, okay, for right now, you need to be aware that Fire Lower is off. Um, this is where you need to reapply Slow or Silence or something. Okay, get, you're going into Ren. That's a waste of a skill. Like, right now, you have so many things that you could be getting up right now. You could be going Claws, Eye Gouge, uh, Crippling Bite. You could be doing Claws, Eye Gouge, Throat Rip. You could be going Claws, Eye Gouge, uh, even like a Rabid Bite if you wanted to recover Fleas because Fleas is about to expire pretty soon, I believe. Um, but right now, just Ren's damage is just so abysmal, like it's not even worth it. If you were really going for pure damage anyway, you'd still you'd be wanting to use Swipe instead of Ren regardless. Um, but yeah, you need to go and get that slope because remember, if he's able to kite you, then he can win the fight. He can full heal himself um, while you're CC'd. Okay, this, you need to silence him, man. Like, silence him. Yep. Like, again, if you silence him, and yep, there's fleas just expired there, um, then you'd be able to do, you'd be able to be interrupting these waterlords. I don't think you've interrupted a single waterlord yet, which is bad. I, don't, I, th I think that's your first interrupted induction, actually, as well, which is not good either. Um, that just comes down to CC pot timing. That comes down to silence timing. Um, silences are interrupts. They're indirect interrupts, so keep that in mind. Again, slow here. I know he's not going anywhere, but you need to be slowing because look at this right here. You could have had his butt the entire time, and he would not be able to CC you right here. You'd be, or Even if he would, you'd be right on him. You would have gotten that extra little bit. You have to remember as slow as one skill that's going to give you multiple skills with positional, multiple skills that he's not able to get off on you. Um, and again, right here, we're getting kited again. Like, this isn't good. Okay, we're going to hop sprint. That's fine. But you have to remember that not every single fight is going to start with sprint. A lot of time, you're going to have to be chasing him down, and sprint's going to be on cooldown. And if you if he had, if you did not have sprint here, you would have you would have lost this fight. Okay. Pigeon's really good. It looks like at keeping SI up. Remember, if you see this drop, you should immediately tendon shred and right go for, right for the CC. Make him pay for it. Okay, that's an uh, that was a bad decision by him. He shouldn't have Stormlord there. It's a waste. Um, there we go. So right there, you uh, looks like you went through your Howl rotation. Okay, it was a little bit of a waste there because it looks like you went Claws, Eye Gouge, Howl, Eye Gouge. Yeah, that's okay. No, 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 no. You went Maul, Eye Gouge, Claws. Okay, so that was fine. That was good. Solid rotation there. You interrupted him not only with eye gouge, but you got a silence on him. You forced him to use a brand a fear pot right now. Um Okay, so again, so, like you don't have shadow fangs up, that needs to stay on like a hundred percent of the time. hundred percent of the time needs to be up. Because that stinks as a lower master. Okay, and then a little crit there. That's fine right there. Okay, so if he'd had called a valor at the end there, you probably would have died probably would have lost that one and if you didn't have sprint you would have lost a few things to think about here this needs to be up 100 percent of the time you want to be throat ripping a lot more i think you didn't don't know that you used throat rip once that entire fight remember lower masters are terrible at removing stuff off of them uh keep it up keep this on keep fleas on 100 percent of the time you can cover fleas very easily with rabid bite and then fleas and they're never going to be able to get it off like ever um slow them always slow 
And uh, one other tip, if they're running fire shield and you know it's going to be a long fight, long, in other words, longer than like 45 seconds, go into your options. We're actually going to show this on screen so you guys can see. Um, go into, uh, and this is great against wardens as well, go into options go under combat options skills can enable default attack and disable that so that means if i hit on you know, like here no autos see this right here no autos whereas before if i had turned this on as it normally is claws and then that's going to start auto attacking now remember auto attacks are damaged but they do almost no damage at all over the course of the fight in terms of percentage wise whereas fire shield you're basically hitting yourself for 600 damage again and again and again every single time an auto attack goes off so disable those auto attacks and you'll have a lot more success against little masters especially where the fights are long and um spammy but overall decent job your damage rotation was fine uh rin was used a little bit too much i think you can always improve on which skill you're using yet like i saw swipe use there when it should have been maul and that's fine work on that but definitely debuff usage was not near enough you could have basically crippled it at the point to where he could have gotten almost no inductions off um especially with the position that work is in disable autos keep him slowed use your silences and keep fleas up all the time again you notice here the last little bit of the fight fleas comes off and you use it at range which is good but he had the opportunity um to be able to remove that if it wasn't for the fact that he had already used it for a silence so keep that in mind you should be thinking he should go i have nothing to remove this with that should be a point in the fight and when he reaches that point in the fight where he cannot i can't remove this fleas i can't remove the silence then he's lost the fight um and you need to be putting him in that position as fast as possible optimal rotation for opening on a lore master is getting your burst getting him slowed shadow fangs eye gouge claws rabbit bite fleas eye gouge claws and then a silence right and that's it. I mean, like, and it's pre stun potting when you know blinding flash. As soon as that fury pot extends, be, know that blinding flash is going to come and interrupt whatever he tries to use afterwards. And when you do that, he's going to have no inductions off. He's going to have no heals off. And he's going to be at very, very low morale. He's going to wisdom, but he's still going to be totally crippled because he's going to have silence on him. He's going to have a rabbit bite on him. Well, he probably would move that. And he's going to have uh, flea bitten on him. And uh, that's going to be and the fight's over basically in your favor. So use that. You should have crippled him. He should have not been able to get a single induction off. Um, good lore masters, if they use Call to Valor, can get inductions off. And if they're really good with their uh, CC timing, they can still get inductions off. But you need to make it absolutely miserable for them to fight you. And I don't think you did a good enough job with that. But overall, that was a solid fight from you. Um, but definitely some things we can work on in the future. So thanks for the clip. 